Sister Moira, go ahead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, for every breath that flows through our body. It is your breath in us, Lord. Thank you for this new year that you've blessed us with. Thank you for everything that you have in store for each one of us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the plans you have for us. They are plans to prosper us and never to harm us. They are plans to give us a good future and hope. Thank you, Father, to keep our eyes always fixed on you this new year and never take our eyes off you. No matter what comes our way, no matter what storms or battles that we face, let us always keep our eyes fixed on you, Jesus. Because only in you can we find peace and hope. Only in you can we find the answers to any situation in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. We surrender everything that we're going to learn today. We surrender, Brother Vincent. We surrender each and every one of us present here, our minds, our body, our spirit. We surrender all the technical uh, appliances and everything. Thank you, Jesus. Open the eyes of our hearts to understand what you are teaching us today. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Moira. Amen. Amen. Uh, Thank you. Praise God, everybody. And my dear sisters, a warm welcome to you all once again. It's nice to be back with you all in the new year in 2023. I know Sister Caroline and Sister Joyce have already been attending the other class, but Sister Angelique and Sister Moira, uh, a happy new year to you all. Same to you, brother. Same Praise to God. Happy new year to you, brother. God bless you. Praise God. So this is an all Australian <laughs> class with Sister Angelique also deciding to desert the ship. Now it is an all Australian class. <laughs> oh, she's very encouraging, brother, Sister Angelique, isn't it, aren't you, Angelique? No, when I said desert the ship, she is not no more in India. She's in Australia. Oh yes, correct, correct. Yes, brother. <laughs> she flew That's why I meant it is an all Australian class. Yes, looks like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, brother. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, we were, we were listening to that song, I am coming home. I am coming home. You know, just about, I would say today is the sixth, about 20 days ago. Yeah, about 20 days ago, our second daughter, she's in the UK. We decided to make a trip for Christmas to India. So on the 18th of December, she came and before it was the new year, by the 30th, she left back. And for almost two months, she was looking forward to coming home. And every day we would call her and she says, I can't wait to be home. I can't wait to have you dad. I can't wait to have you mom. I can't wait to meet my brother, my sister. And she was so excited. My second daughter, my eldest daughter was working in Pune. She's working and she also arrived on the 24th, the Christmas Eve. And she was so excited because although she was working online, she now could work from home during this Christmas week and a special case. And so she also was at home, although she was working throughout the day, but she was happy to be at home. My son, who is doing his third year architecture, he came from Manipal a month before Christmas. Not a month, he came around the 9th. And he was so excited to be home. So it was like, he doesn't have to wash his clothes. He doesn't have to, you know, go to the mess to get his food. He doesn't have to worry about going to class, waking up in the morning. He could wake up at any time. So coming home was absolute freedom. There's no work to do. There is nothing absolutely. Just eat and tell us what, where he wants to go or where they want to go. Or just take the bike or take the car and just go out and have a good time. And because they were home, the worry of the routine, the worry of you know, the usual things that they had to do was absolutely gone. And you know, while this was happening, 
with my children all back around the Christmas time, you know, it was the 25th, we were all having Christmas time and then 26th, I was just reflecting my during my own prayer time. I was saying, Lord, how wonderful it is all we are together. And I know that in a few days time, all of them before the new, by, by the time the new year begins, all of them will have gone and just Melanie, my wife and myself will be at home and um, we'll be looking forward to the next time we have all our children together, which, which obviously has to be Christmas time only because my, elder, my second daughter is in the UP can only come during Christmas time or even if we meet her, it is going to be only her and not the other two. So if all have to meet, it has to be at home. It has to be during Christmas time. And possibly, you know, if there is some sort of a celebration in the family where everyone will be understanding there's going to be a major celebration, then all of us will meet. So coming home was a moment of excitement. Coming home was a moment to rejoice. Coming home was a moment for them to look forward to. And that is just coming home to the place where we are living right now. That's what they believe is home. But when they go back, they believe that their homes are where they are studying or where they are working or wherever. That's, that's where their homes are. But when they come to home, it's where their parents are. And you know, my dear sisters, having said that, and we hearing this song, I'm excited coming home. How many of us realize that this particular place where we are living right now, the planet Earth, where we are right now living, is actually not our home? Is that right? Come on. Yes, brother. As yes, long brother. as we are on this planet Earth, we have to plan the menu for the day, what breakfast, what lunch, what dinner. Then we have to start managing, you know, uh, what's the weather like, whether we have to wear warm clothes. I know right now you're all eating ice cream. In Europe, they're all, all India, wooden, wooden clothes, all shivering because it's very cold there. Yes, sir. Because in Australia yes. right now, you all are ready for ice cream and ready to go to the beach and absolutely lays around there. And the people in Europe probably would envy you all because you have a hot weather, maybe 38 degrees, but still yeah. better than being yeah. in minus one and minus, minus two. Minus yeah. seven, minus, yes, yeah. brother. Yeah. In Ukraine, yeah. they are freezing. Yeah. I'll put, you know, Ukraine, yeah. in Ukraine, they are freezing. That's right. Yeah. In, in, in yeah. parts of Russia and all, I mean, it's been a very cold winter, very yeah. unusual in Europe. And so, you know, when as long as we are living on this planet earth we've got to deal with our with the food we have we've got to deal with day-to-day -day routine we've got to deal with our children we've got to deal with our you know issues you know we will have in our relationship we have to deal with you know our so many issues i mean you know there's going to be persecution there's going to be so many issues right now and exactly what our children when they go back to their respective you know jobs or when they go back to their they have got to deal with their problem. All of us. This is not our home because we are all going to all plan to go to our real home where just like my children here, just lays around, nothing to do, just enjoy, have food, you know, just lays around. What's the plan for the day? Nothing to worry about preaching the gospel. No worry about anybody persecuting you. No, no sign of the devil troubling you. And that's the place where we are all heading for. The question is, are we really preparing for home? Are we really excited about home? Are we really looking to what that real home is when knowing right now on this planet. I know my sister Caroline right now, although she's muted, she's got a grandchildren around her. Probably she will be saying, I wish the grandchildren could have been handled. I could listen to this talk without any interruption. And right now, even though she has been a, a mother, now she has got a second role of a grandmother. So now it's not just, you know, looking after them babysitting, but looking after their food and checking out or no, you know, whether they're all fine, they're not, you know, 
bring any disturbance around probably there are yes. so many things that you would have to look after not just you know babysit them yeah. right sister yeah. Carol? Oh, very much so, brother, especially the older grandson who Melanie made the prayer for, you know. He is a little bit, but never, you know. The girl is very sweet, but she too can be a little bit uh, energetic. Be full, of beans, full of beans, but I'd rather have them full of beans than, you know, what I mean, brother. And yeah. imagine, imagine, but, Sister Caroline, yes. you know, we all decide that we'll give you a holiday to Honolulu. <laughs> you and your husband only alone to Honolulu, go to the beach, you know, food, breakfast, lunch, go to it, just go to the beach, no worry of anybody, wake up when you want, sleep when you want, just have a good time. I mean, what would you prefer between the two? Honolulu or wake up and no. children traveling? No, brother. So many things to do. Which would you prefer? I prefer to be the family no matter I know what you I like say. to be with the grandchildren, not Honolulu. No, brother. Yes, yes. With children, no matter. Hey, Carol. <laughs> the work we have, but it doesn't matter, brother. You know, it's a joy. I'd rather but eventually, be eventually, mm -hmm. we want to be in a place where there is absolute tranquility, absolute peace. I mean, no one on sitting on your head. No one telling you, did you preach the gospel? Did you go and share the good news? Did you share your testimony? Did you prepare lunch? Did you prepare breakfast? Did you put extra salt? Did you put extra spice? And nothing to worry about. I don't have to wash my clothes. I don't need to iron, uh, press my clothes. I don't need to worry about how I smell. I don't need to worry whether I took a shower or not. I don't need to worry about anything. Just let life be as it is. Which life would you prefer? Come on, honestly, tell me. <laughs> A life where there is, you know, mm. nothing to do, brother. Just mm. enjoy mm. the Just bliss enjoy of Enjoy yourself, life. right? Mm. Yeah. Everything ready. Everything found. Whatever you feel yes. like doing, whatever you want to enjoy, you want to play badminton, you can play badminton. You want to play tennis or you want to sing like Joyce, you want to just sing. You are just in a mood to sing. You want to sing your heart out and you want to praise and you just want to praise and you say, as soon as I finish my praise, I don't have to worry after that, after praise. I just go to the buffet table, take what I want, drink what I want. I can just do what I feel like. Come on, is anyone really looking for a life like that? Yes, brother. What like Joyce? I don't only just sing and just don't do anything after that. <laughs> no, 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 no. You get that <laughs> Very funny. I'm saying, after you sing, will your, will your stomach get filled <laughs> after singing? You still have to go to the kitchen and cook, right? You still have to go to the groceries and buy the groceries, right? Yes. Yes. Doing yes. everything what a normal human being You have being to clean your to house, do. right? Then what? You have to take a shower yes. after you've been sweating in 38 degrees, right? Sometimes I have no have time to, to worry. Sing. The temperature is absolutely fine. I want to sing, but sleep. I cannot sing. You can eat your food. Nothing you have to do. Just do your heart's desire. Nobody's going to bother you. Right? Come on. Come on, my dear. Yes. Imagine a life like that. Yes. That's the, the life. life. And that's the life that God has prepared for each one of us in a place called home. Praise Jesus. Yes, brother. Yes. Yes. I just told you my children, no tension of getting up in the morning where they'll have breakfast, who will wash their clothes. The clothes are picked up. They are washed by their mother. They are nicely washed, they are folded, they are pressed and ready to use till they are dirty again and they'll be poured. But when they go back there, everything they need to do on their own. They need to fend for their, for their meals. They need to go to college. They need to go to work. They need to pick the bus. They need to pick the rickshaw. They need to go by the train. They need to go through the rough and tough of this life. And then finally, they wait for a place called home where they can avoid all these things. But we are looking for that place home where all these things that we are doing on this planet, Earth, including preaching the gospel, will no more be required when we get back home. But while we are here, 
while we are preparing for home, while we are preparing for home, there is a role for each one of us. Before we reach home, before we reach home, we are in a state of preparation because what we do here and how we live here and how we believe what Jesus has done for us will decide whether we shall reach home. Is everyone with me? Yes, brother. Very yes, true. brother. Yes, brother. You know, I want to take you to our first scripture for today. John chapter 17 and verse number 16. John chapter 17, verse number 16. Look at what this verse says. Okay, let's read 15 and 16. Let's read 15 and 16. Who wants to read that? Brother, it's not on the screen. Oh, it's not on the screen. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Why did I think I'd share the screen? Praise God. Okay, let's start reading from 14 onwards. 14 to 16. Come on. Is everyone able to see the screen? Is everyone able Not to see? Not yet come up, brother. I think the internet connection. You are not able to see it? No, no. Okay, just, just a second. Just a second. Okay, is it possible? Can you see it now? Yes, brother. Okay. From verse 14 onwards, 14 to 16. Let's read that. I have given to them your word, the message you gave me. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world and do not belong to the world. Just as I am not of the world and do not belong to it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what Jesus is saying. You know, when you, when you come to John chapter 17, my dear sisters, you know, this is Jesus' last words or last prayer which he uttered on this earth as man. As man. Because if you go afterwards, 18, 19, you will see Jesus is already taken to the cross. He's already now, uh, he's, you know, his passion and death has become. So John chapter 14, 15, 16 and 17 is, is considered what John has written as some of the most profound words of Jesus. In fact, in John chapter 17, what we see in red is Jesus praying to his father. And what he's praying is in John chapter 17, as we see verse 14, it says, I have given them thy word. Whose word? He has given them his word or the father's word? The father's, the father's word. word. The father's, father's word. God's word. And the word has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Can you imagine Jesus is saying to his disciples, he's saying that his disciples are not of the world as he is not of the world. Can we all, my dear sisters, also say this prayer? Come on. Can we all say this prayer as well? Lord, yes, I am not of this world just as you are not of this world. Come on. Lord, Lord I am not of this world just as you are not of this world. So what is the meaning when we make that statement? What is the, what is the meaning of that word? Just now when you Sister Angelique, when you declare that word. We need to say, that? even though I'm a spirit, even what though I'm a spirit, mean? I'm called yeah. to be a spirit being, no, no, I no. cannot be conformed to this world. 
No, when you make that statement with Jesus himself prayed and now personalized it. Now, why can I, why, is it possible for me to personalize Jesus' prayer also? Yes, yes. Yes. Absolutely, because he said, if you believe in me, you shall do the same works that I did, right? And greater. Come on, I'll yes. show you something. I'll show you something. John 14, verse number 12. Look yeah. at what Jesus says. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my father. Going to the father. So coming back to John chapter 17. And we, we go to verse number 14. Correct? He says. Yes. They are not of this world. Just as I am not of this world. So if I take the words of Jesus. And say Jesus. I am not of this world just as you were not of this world. Can I make that statement? Yes, I can yes. make that statement just because I showed you if I believe in Jesus, I have to do the same thing that he did, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Now, when you make that statement that you are not of this world, just like Jesus was not of this world, what is the implication of that statement? There are consequences when you make yes. that word, when you make that statement. Unless you believe it, you can't make that statement. So when you make that mm -hmm. statement that you're not of this world, just, just as Jesus was not of this world, what are the consequences of that? Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. We don't belong here. What? Everything that we're is here happening here temporarily, today. but we're not here. This is not what our happened? eternal home. We are not of. The verse 14, the first half of verse 14 is giving you and me the answer. Mm. It says, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He says, because. Why because? Because Jesus gave them his word. He gave them the word of the Father. And the world hated, hated them. them. The world hated them. Here's my sisters. Listen to this very carefully. Listen to this very carefully. You know, during my own time of prayer, during my own time of study, you know, I get, I, I hear the Lord speaking to me many times. I get this, you know, I'll tell you what. You know, many times I have gone to retreats, right? I've got, attended many retreats, right? many Bible studies, heard a lot of preachers. And you know, whenever I went to that retreat and when I heard the preacher preaching and he preached something if I knew it oh I said he's preaching something I know that oh yes I know it yeah 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 he's preaching that very nice but should the preacher have started preaching something which was a new revelation to me do you know what used to happen to me do you know what used to happen to me it is to shake me up it used to stir me up. It, in fact, it even used to disturb me. I don't know whether any of you can relate to what I'm saying right now. Exactly. If I am hearing something that I'm very familiar with, everything that I was brought up with, catechism and all the teachings and everything, and I hear the preacher and I hear the people who are teaching something which I already know. Oh, I say it's music to my ear. I've heard that before. I know this. I know it. But the moment I hear a new doctrine, a new truth, a new revelation, and it doesn't fit into my theology, it doesn't fit into my doctrine that I've learned, is there going to be some agitation or some disturbance inside of me? Yes. yes. And you know, my dear sisters, yes. You know, my dear sisters, the Lord taught me this very early in the ministry. He told me, whenever you go to share the word of God, you are going to encounter people who will want to hear what they have already known. They will want to hear what they have already been taught. They will want to hear 
what they are familiar with, what they have been brought up with. And when I tell you to speak the truth and explain the scriptures, you are going to be rejected. You are going to face persecution. Probably they may even spit on you. Probably they may never even want to come to your ministry. And I said, Lord, if you tell me to say that, I'm simply going to say it. Even if I don't have anybody coming, but I'm going to be your mouthpiece. And whatever you tell me to speak, I'm going to speak. And you know, my dear sisters, when I began to start doing that, do you think it was very encouraging? Do you think it's very encouraging? Brother, uh, didn't hear some parts of it, brother. I said, you know, when you begin to share the gospel or you begin to do the preaching or you begin to share the truth with somebody, Can you all hear me now? Praise God. Yes. Brother. Yes, it's yes, brother. No, brother. God. I think it was my internet. I just got it changed to my hotspot. The internet is a little bit unstable. Okay. Let me, let me repeat what I was just saying to you. You know, there are many times. Your voice is breaking, brother. Voice is breaking? Is it still breaking? Yes, yes. Okay, just give me a second. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's okay is, is it better now? Is it better now? Much better. Yes, 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 brother. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. I'm going to tell you, uh, what I was saying is, there are many times, there are many times where I have gone to different, different sessions, you know, in, in the past, when I was definitely not sharing the word, where I was on the side, like you are right now listening. And there are many times when the preacher preached to me or somebody shared the word to me. If he shared something or he preached something which I was already familiar with, I used to feel so happy. I said, I know that. Oh, he's sharing something. He's, you know, he's telling something what I already know. It's something that I've been taught to me in catechism. I've been growing up with this, you know, every Sunday by the preachers, by the teachers. I've been told these things. So what I'm hearing is something very familiar to me. But there were times when I began to hear from certain preachers, not everybody, some doctrines and some truths which were now not in line with what I had learned for so many years. And when that began to happen, it began to disturb me. It began to stir me up. He said, if this is how we are, or everybody is doing, this is what the preacher is saying, that there must be a conflict in this. There must be something unusual in this. Now, whom to follow? What I've been doing all this time or what the preacher has said? And the preacher has explained it with the scriptures. The preacher has explained it with the truth of God's word. He has demonstrated the word with signs and wonders. And now I know certain things are like this. And now I know the new truth. And now started my journey of conflict. Not on the outside, but on the inside. One side, I have learned for so many years something. Now I've come to know the truth, which is telling me something else. Now I am in a ping pong situation, whether when I go to the, my service, I do it this way, or I begin to follow what the new truth, which I have been shown, which has been explained to me, which has been demonstrated to me. Where do I follow? And you know, it so happened. For four to five years of my life, after I got to know the truth, I was in a very confused state. And I'm sharing this with you, my dear sisters, is because there is a reason for this. When I began to be in this confused state, you know, I, I had this born again experience in 2008 or 2009. You know, between 2008, 2009 till about 2013, 2014, it was like a ding dong for almost four or five years. One side, you know, we pray in a particular way. One side, the truth says something else. And it was during this time, the enemy took advantage and I got attacked to the point I went into depression. I was accused falsely at my workplace. You know, when somebody is in a confused state, 
when somebody is in a confused state and the enemy strikes now you don't know whether to go this way or to go this way the enemy will say because you switch from what you were listening all this time to the truth now you are in a confused state now you are in such a state where you don't know which side to go to get a solution to your problem are you with me what i'm saying correct Hundred. What I heard was the truth. All my years, I heard the lie. I heard religion. I heard what you have to do in order to please God. I had to do something in order to get something, but but now that I know the truth, I'm not doing anything to please God. I'm just believing what Jesus has done. And now when I'm in this confused state, not able to make a decision whether to go right to the truth or to the left, which is religion. the enemy struck and i found myself in big time depression three and a half years but you know my dear sisters god in his mercy god in his unconditional love god because he chose me from the foundations of the earth he slowly but surely allowed me to get to the pit without you know letting me get help immediately without me you know getting a solution immediately till i realized in that pit the only one who can lift me out from the pit to the pulpit is the lord jesus christ and his word and his jesus and when i began to understand that it was not religion but it was the truth of god's word it was his word i was fully convinced which side i have to be on the right or on the left and when i made that decision you know my dear sisters the world began to hate me are you all with me Yes. Yes, brother. Now look at this verse. Look at this verse. Verse fourteen. What did Jesus say in verse fourteen? I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them. because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world i want to ask you why would the world hate them when they have got god's word because you don't follow their their way the world the world's way and the world's way are absolutely contrary Opposite. to each other you know if you are you know i don't know whether in the australia you have lot of rivers i have never come to australia but if you if you come to india you know all the rivers start in the himalayas in the in the, in the mountains on top and then they flow downwards they flow downwards okay they flow into different to south india they flow into north india you have the kaveri krishna all these brahmaputra and all. so they start from the top and obviously when you are on the top and then you want to go downstream and you want to go downstream from the top to downstream and there's a slope down do you think you need to make any effort to go downstream you go with the flow no. you go with the flow absolutely you don't need any effort yeah. because you just yeah. go with the flow but should you want to go from downstream to upstream will it require effort you have to wear you have Do to you make an effort opposition to the flow of the water which is coming from full speed down yeah will it have resistance for you force is different speed? you have to work your way 100% yes yeah in the same way the world system is from is downstream if anyone flows with the world system nobody will hate you the moment you begin to flow upstream against the system of the world 
you are going to face opposition. You are going to face resistance. People are going to hate you. People are going to give you all names. You are Protestant. You are, you know, probably born again. Or you are, you know, belonging to some different church. You are not Catholic. And they will, they will label you everything. Because for them, you are not doing it what everybody has been doing. Hello? Call you mad or? Yes, brother. And that's a decision that each one has to make. If we are going to go to the place called home. You know, getting home, my dear sisters, is not going to be easy. It's not going to be a cakewalk. It's not going to be something that you're going to go with the flow. Everybody is doing it. So let me also do it. It cannot be. You may have to be a loner at times. You may have to be a loner sometimes. Because you want to do what the father wants you to do. Hello? Is everyone with me? Yes, yes, brother. Yes, brother. We are not here, you know, thinking that all of us, you know, we all say, when we one day get to heaven, what a great day to be. Surely it will be a great day. But we are not all going together. We all want to go together, surely. But you have to make that decision whether you want to be with the, with the crowd, with the gang, with the majority, with democracy, or you want to go it with the word and you want to go it through the with the Holy Spirit. And that will involve many a times being isolated, being rejected, being you know kept aside, and even probably being persecuted to the point where there can be a physical assault on you as well. But it's all worth it. Because we know we are doing all this to reach home. To reach home. If we are going to be short-sighted, just because, you know, we just, you know, you know, many a times, you know, my dear sisters, it's easy for us to say, I don't want to have argument. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to displease. Let me just be with everyone. Let me take a decision so that, you know, everybody is happy. Everybody is happy. If you are going to make a decision where everybody is happy, at least, now, now let, me, let me give you an example. Sometimes you may misunderstand this. Say everybody wants to go for a meal to a particular place. Okay? They all like Chinese food. And you don't like Chinese food. You like probably Indian food. Are you going to not go for Chinese food just because you don't like China, because you know you prefer Indian food? No, I'm not talking about that. If everybody like Chinese food and you you like don't like Chinese food, might as well go with them all together because ultimately it's only food. It's only food. So in that respect, go with the flow. Don't be like one saying, no, you all want Chinese, I like Indian food. You all all come for Indian food because I want Indian food. That's selfish. But I give another example. The Lord says, you know, we are not going to go to this particular function because it coincides with what commitment we have for the Lord. We are going to be committed to this particular time for the Lord. We, are, we have committed ourselves and therefore, if everybody is going, let everybody go. But I'm not going to go because I have an appointment, divine appointment with the Lord. Even if you displease those people there for not going to that function because you decide to commit yourself to the Lord, do you think you hurt anybody there? Not at all. You committed yourself to the Lord because he came first in your life. But when it is Chinese food or Indian food or Japanese food, Whatever food is there, go eat it. It's about to go in your stomach and get to the latrine. But when it comes to the Lord, I'm not going to go with the flow with other people and get tempted and just go wherever and desert my Lord and that make which I made a commitment to. Because for me, 
the Lord comes first. Are you with me? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Is that going to involve? <clears throat> is that going to involve opposition? Yes. Are people yes. of the family going to say to yes, you? Yes. Are even the members of your family going to say to you, "What is this?" When all of us are going, and you know all this function, you won't be there. Are you going to be carried away with all those emotional things and all the stuff? Or are you going to say, Lord, even if my family says I'm not going to be there because I already committed to you, I am going to be where I have to be. That's my commitment to you, number one. And if there is nothing else for me at that time, I will go to the family commitment or I will join them later. But I am not going to compromise. I am not going to forego this commitment and this time that I have fixed with you. If you begin to have such an attitude, Amen. if you begin to have such an attitude, you are preparing for home. You are preparing you, for home. You may think, oh, I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss that wedding. I'm going to miss that party. I'm going to miss that. You know, it's 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 five star. It's not, it's not always the case. You know, just about 15 days ago, there was this couple. I ministered to their brother in the, you know, on the phone. He was really in a very bad shape when he was in the UK about five, six months ago. He got married. He came to go and he got married. And the sister said, brother, please come to the wedding. Please come to the wedding. And I said to them, see, I've got another commitment. I already have this class. And I'm sorry, I will not be able to come. Please come later. I said, if I come later... It's, I'll probably come only to eat. If I'm only going to come only to eat the, the food, I'm not going to be there at the reception. That's not good for me. because I, And it's quite a distance. So I said to them, sorry, I cannot make it. Fantastic wedding. People come from the UK with all their pounds. A great wedding. Well planned. But if I have a commitment, I let go for the wedding reception. Then ever compromise on what I have committed to the Lord. And you know what, my dear sisters, when you begin to understand that the Lord has chosen you and appointed you and he has, he's, he's trusting you, he has trusted you with something. He has trusted you with something. You're not going to break that trust, are you? No. We need to ask ourselves. Are we breaking trust with the Lord many times? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We say Lord understands everything. He understands everything because we become more man pleasers. We want to please people around us instead of pleasing the Lord. And if we really become God pleasers, surely we won't become man pleasers, but we will be going home. We will be going home. And we will be excited about home. Really going home. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, my dear sisters, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. You know, if you go to, I think there's another scripture in John chapter 18, verse 36. John chapter 18. Verse 36. Look at what Jesus says later on when he is before Pilate. This is now already, he's already been arrested. Look at what Jesus says in verse number 36. Come on, let's read that. Somebody read that. You all can see the screen. Jesus answered, Jesus. my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. 
But now is my kingdom not from hence. So he says, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. Let us ask ourselves. If Jesus could say, my kingdom is not of this world. Then what kingdom are we supposed to build up? Which kingdom, kingdom are we supposed to, which kingdom are we supposed to be belong to? And which kingdom, if we are not of this world, then which kingdom are we supposed to build? The light, the kingdom of light, not the kingdom of darkness, earth, isn't it? Yeah. We are supposed to build the kingdom of God. God yeah. is light. Praise God. We are supposed to build the kingdom of, the, of, of God, right? Because anyway, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So if, the, if, the, if Jesus could say, my kingdom is not of this world, he could say, I don't belong to this world. Then obviously, he had come to build the kingdom which was of his father. Jesus had come to build the kingdom of his father. The kingdom that you and I are supposed to live for all eternity after we get out from this world. So if, the, if, our, if our kingdom is not of this world, we don't belong to this world, then are we going to face opposition in this world? Yes. Are we going to face opposition? Yes. Yes. Is there anybody of this world that is going to come to our defense? No. No. Look at what Jesus said. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not of this world. So if, if our kingdom is not of this world, we cannot depend on the government. We cannot depend on the police. We cannot depend on some wrestler and some boxer to, to defend us because our defense comes from heaven. Amen. You know, my dear sisters, I don't know how many of you in the last few days have seen some video that has been going around of some churches being destroyed in Chhattisgarh in India. Has anyone yes, seen this video? Yeah. 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 And it's true. They have really started, all these people have started, you know. And as I was looking at that video and seeing that, I realized that just about two months or three months ago, you know, this uh, Sandeep and all who belong to, who come to my class, he's, he shares on Saturday. He, Brother Johnson, and so many, Kiyomi and all those people, they had all gone, um, I think it was, some, the whole JCLM team had gone and preached in Chhattisgarh. And as soon as the retreat got over, within a month or so, this persecution has started in Chhattisgarh. Because they had a retreat in North India. I don't know how many of you are aware of that. But they had a retreat in those villages yes, in Chhattisgarh. They had some, uh, you know, in, in Ajmer, in Rajasthan, in Uttar Pradesh, so many parts of North India. And now the word has been preached to them. People all of a sudden are now changed their thinking in line with the word. They have come in direct opposition to the kingdom of this world. And as soon as their thinking began to change, as soon as they began to operate according to the system of this world, now there has been opposition. Now they are not going as per, the, as per the system that they were following all this time because the truth has set them free. And right enough, persecution started for those Christians. Churches were being destroyed. I realized that as soon as the word of God was being preached to them and they began to operate in line with the word of God because the truth set them free, persecution started happening in those places. And you know, my dear sisters, only, only those who live a godly life, for them, persecution will come. Are you listening? Yes, brother. Let me yes, show brother. you something. Let me show you something. 
2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 12. Look at what he says. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It never said that those who live godly shall suffer persecution. It says those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall face, shall suffer persecution. That means only Christians, those who are rooted and grounded in the word of God, those who have made Jesus their Lord, God, and Savior, those who have received the Holy Spirit and are operating according to the word of God, they only shall suffer persecution. Not everybody. Not everybody who calls themselves Christian. Not everybody who's got a Christmas tree and has got, you know, a crib in the house and who's got the midnight mass and who's sung carols and, and made Christmas sweets and just celebrated Christmas. All of them will not suffer persecution. Only those who live godly in Christ Jesus, who are operating according to the word of God, who have been led by the spirit of God, only those shall suffer persecution. And they'll suffer persecution because they are getting ready for home. Because Amen. they are getting Amen. ready for home. You know, my dear sisters, let me say this to you. If you and I are not facing persecution and rejection, it's a very clear sign that we are heading in the same direction as the enemy. I don't know whether I just made a statement that can stir you up right now from your foundations. If you and I are not facing persecutions, it's because we are heading in the same direction as the enemy. There is no opposition. There is no persecution. And only those who suffer persecution are preparing for home. For home. Yeah. Once you make a decision, you know, Jesus said, anyone who puts the plow, you know, he puts the plow, you know, he wants to, he wants to plow the field. Yeah. When he puts his hand on the plow and looks back, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. When you have put the plow and you're moving forward, you will simply move forward. You won't look back. Why? The moment you look back, you know what's going to happen? You will stop plowing and you'll get back to the place of coziness, rest, and comfort. But our life here on this earth is not going to be a life of rest and comfort because the only time we will see rest and comfort and the only time we will see that life where we really don't have to preach or do anything is when we get back home. And until this time, because we are building the kingdom of God, because we are in direct opposition to kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of this world. Remember, we are, we are as long as we are living on this world, we must keep this in mind. We don't belong to this world. We are, we are not belonging to any kingdom other than the kingdom of God, which is in direct opposition to the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of darkness. So we can either belong to the kingdom of this world and operate according to our family, not necessarily be of kingdom of darkness. You can be of kingdom of this world, just living a life of no, you know, of no, no fruit, just occupying space, just going about day-to-day -day activities. Nothing, no reaching out of the gospel, not even living the gospel, not even making a difference in the kingdom of light, not bringing anyone to the kingdom of light. Just, you know, doing our own thing. That's no problem. You don't belong to the kingdom of darkness, but you're not belonging to the kingdom of light. You don't belong to the kingdom of Jesus Christ because you're very much entrenched into this world. The next stage, once you are entrenched to this world, you're going to give an entry to the devil. He's going to get access into you because the moment you get into this world, you have lost your hold on, on the world. You're away from the source of light. You're away from the source of wisdom. You will lead, be led into temptation into the kingdom of darkness and he will 
take your lunch, your dinner and everything and he will give you the most miserable end. And that's why we must make the decision to get into the kingdom of life, start plowing the field and start moving forward and not look back, but continue to move forward with the help of the Holy Spirit and the word of God to direct us to the finishing line. Amen. 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 You know, my dear sisters, this particular, <clears throat> second, this particular attitude is going to bring persecution, going to bring rejection. You will find everything in your life, your priority is changing. The way you begin to make decisions will change. The way you begin to say yes to people and no to people will be very, very crystal clear. There won't be a yes. There won't be a no. There won't be yes, yes, no, no. It will be a yes or it will be a very hard no. Hard no. Amen. Amen. So, coming back to this verse that we were studying from John chapter 17. Let's go back. John chapter 17 and let's go to verse number, I think we started 14. Look at what it says in verse number 15. I pray not, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil one. Jesus is saying, Lord, I'm not praying that you know you, that they die and they go away from this world. No. They are in this world, but they are not of this world. But I'm praying that you should not take them away from this world. If he takes them away from this world, where will they go? They will go home. But he's saying, Lord, I don't want you to take them away from this world, but I want you to keep them from the evil one. Then he says in verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Then he says in verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. You know, my dear sisters, look at this verse number 18. We are not of this world. We do not belong to this world. We are not come to build the kingdom of this world. We are not come to build our own kingdom. We are not even come to build anything of our own here. But we are here to advance and build the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, as thou hast sent me into the world. The father was the one who sent Jesus into this world. That's what we celebrated a few days ago, Christmas. He's saying, even so have I also sent them. And that them includes you and me. I wanted to look at this. Even so have I also sent them into the world. I want to ask you right now, wherever you are, whether you are in a, in, in, you know, in a place where you have been living or you, you plan to live for the rest of your life, or whether you are visiting some place and you will go back to where you normally live, you have been sent. Hello? My dear sisters, you have been sent. Yes, God's plan for us. Even so also, I, I also send them into the world. Do you believe, my dear sisters, that you have been sent? Yes, brother. Does anyone want to share anything about you being sent somewhere? <coughs> anyone wants to share something if you have been sent? If we have been sent, then we have been sent for what? To do God's work. To preach the word. 
to preach, to teach, to share, to make a difference. And, yeah, in the kingdom. To make a, yeah. make a change it. within ourselves. Fruit. Absolutely. Bear so, fruit. does anyone want to share something? If you have been sent. Bear fruit for the kingdom. Yeah, so, anyone wants to share something? What we have to do is one thing. What we are doing? Mr. Angelique, I know you are on a mission. You are in Australia right now. Yes, brother. Would you like to share something? You know, brother, uh, the, the most... Uh, uh, I think it's the uh, 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 imagine that you know. Uh, sometimes I can't believe that I'm here because uh, of all the the setbacks that came before. But praise God, I am here now. But being here, brother, it's it's not about you know. It's not about my uh, being. Of course, secondary of being with my family and my grandchildren and everything, that's secondary. But you know, when I came, uh, you know, the, the, the way when you, uh, when you have made a change, the transition that has taken place and wherever you go, whatever you do, you still remain the same. You don't change because of the culture. You don't right. change because of the people. Right. And even though there is so much of a big transition from where I have come to where I am now, I don't change. Even if I can see the, I, I mean, for me, I don't go, go forward and tell people to do this, do that, change this way, change that way. No, the, the, the change has to come from within. Amen. But, you know, it's me making that change and staying with that change wherever I am. It, it always remains the same. Like here, I mean, in, in, in India, back in India, I mean, uh, the culture in India, we have so much reverence for when we go to church. You know, we dress modestly and uh, we have reverence and we participate. There is this wholehearted participation during the Mass. But here, it is quite different. Maybe because of the way they are or, the, or how the culture is or they, they don't adapt or they may be not understanding what it means. But yet, when I have gone to church here, I still remain the way I am because I know what it means to serve God and who God is. Praise God. And the change that that he is made in my life. And I, yes, when, when, I, when I speak to some of my family members, yes, I do say that God, it's the grace of God that takes me from day to day to day. And every day when I get up, I don't come out of my room until and unless I, I seek his providence every morning. And that, after that, I, I start my day. I mean, it's sad to see, I mean, I'm in Australia. I, I can't go up to people and say, behave yourself in church, dress modestly, come to church fully dressed. I can't do that. I can't do it physically. But I can only pray in spirit for them. And also, starting with my family members who are so far away from God, I can pray for them in spirit. But I cannot go and force somebody to do what they don't want to do. Absolutely. And I believe by faith that God will touch their heart in some way or the other, that there will be a change in their life that will bring them closer and closer to God. Yeah. And I'm happy that, you know, even though I'm here, I, have, I haven't, there's no change. It's not like when I'm here, I have to change. No, the way I was and the way the change, the transition that has happened is just the same. I don't change for anybody. God. I only change for God. Because God. I am obedient to his word. 
to his praise will. Praise God. Praise God. I cannot make that change. Like for instance, if suppose today we had to go somewhere, I'm just saying, and I had Bible class, I would not have gone. I would have stayed back. I would have attended the Bible class and my family could have carried on. Praise God. Praise God. It, may, it can happen even next week. We may have something to do next week. But I, it doesn't matter to me because, brother, all these things are temporary. Amen. Amen. Socializing, meeting people, partying. Yes, I can do it. Maybe I can meet those same people another time. Doesn't matter. But my commitment to the kingdom of God, my commitment to God and what he has done for me in my life, my sustenance and every breath I take is because of him. Praise God. When, Praise God. And, and when I have realized that, then I cannot change because even if I change, God remains the same. Amen. Beautiful. Well said, Sister Angela. Praise God. Praise yes, God. Yes, brother. Praise God. You know, he's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. And yes, if we can change to be like him each day, then you know what? He will transform us each day into his likeness. Because it is not we who, oh, he's not going to change for us. He's not, he's an unchanging God. He's the same. And it is we who need to make that change. We are the ones who need to adapt. We are the ones who need to, you know, humble ourselves to his word. We need to start being obedient. We need to make him number one in our life. And what you just said is exactly so profound and so wonderful that, you know, as you said, you can't change people around you. We cannot change even our own family members. We can't change our spouse. We can't change our children. But if we are able to stay committed and stay focused on the Lord and do what his word says, I think that will be the greatest witness. That will be the greatest testimony that we can give to our own family instead of preaching to them Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, but preaching to them with our very yes. own lives what Christ has done to us. Yes, yes, brother. Especially in a country like this, which is, where the culture is totally upset. Totally upset. Mm. Mm. My own family members who have come to church last Saturday, they are not interested in what is going on. Participation is zero. The church, the choir is even not enthusiastic in, in bringing out that those those words that me have mean so much in that song. Same, same, same here. Correct, Angela. And people are so distracted. They are not bothered. But yet, they think out of, I don't know. I don't know, brother. I, 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 I will never, yeah. ever you know, be judgmental you know, about... I, I look at things a little bit differently. Okay? I look at what you just shared with me a little bit differently. Okay, now, now please don't be offended or you know misunderstand me because I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. Say for example, okay, say for example, you are in Bangalore. You're not. You're now visiting Australia. You're in Bangalore. Yes, and brother. just about down your road, about say 50 meters down your road, there is a restaurant that prepares good food. Yes, brother. And there are almost about 10, 15 restaurants. And that one particular restaurant makes really excellent food. And you have visited almost, almost 10, 12 restaurants in, in that area, but you like the food from that restaurant. Now tell me, after you have visited all the restaurants and, and shortlisted this one restaurant that really gives you good food, do you think that when you have a choice, you are going to go to any other restaurant than that restaurant which gives you good food? Yes, brother. I'll go to the restaurant that that I feel comfortable with. Which you the feel choice. comfortable, which gives you good food, which is really, you know, yeah. blessing you with, with the food where you really appreciate the food. And that's where I, I'm actually going to come from here. You know, most of the time, my dear sister Angelique and my dear sisters, the churches that we are attending today are dead churches. Yes, brother. Yes, yes. Yes, I agree with you. D-E-A-D in capital letters, 
because people are going there only for entertainment only to do an obligation or probably only to go there and feel that on a sunday i see for example sunday i mean on a, on, a, on a christmas day most of the people what they do they go for midnight mass or they go for a service in the morning and once they have attended service they have sung some christmas carols they have put their suits on they felt you know the, they saw the christmas tree they they saw the crib they bowed down to the crib and they went for service the rest of the day is only drinking eating making merry and that's what our christmas is every year and you know what if you get to a place if you get to a place where they really begin to tell you what christmas really is that christmas is not one day just to go for a service and eat and drink and make merry and then sleep and wake up on boxing day with your eyes red i even know in australia they play cricket they play a test match on boxing day south africa got beaten in got beaten in about two or three days on boxing day test match i don't know if you are a cricket fan you would know what i'm talking about yes 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 brother yeah so because i'm also a cricket fan you know i also love to play cricket and i love to follow cricket sometimes so my point is our understanding of christmas is on that 124th midnight have a christmas tree have a crib have some carols sung make some sweets have a turkey or have a big um, chicken grill and that's christmas for us you go to a church service you have attended church service you feel oh now it's christmas because i finished the the religious part of it but actually speaking are we really fellowshipping in a place where people really understand the word or having are getting growing in the word or really being encouraged in the word or they're just going to perform their their weekly ritual or their obligation so to say and they are not growing because they are getting into that same circle they're just going through it they're just going through the motions it's only when we come to the word and we begin to understand what the word is and really get to a church which is really preaching the truth that's the time there is going to be growth there is going to be you know contribution there is going to be fruit that is going to be produced by us because we have gained something we have gained the knowledge we have understood the love of god we have understood what the word is telling us and we will go up the mountain we say that we will really sing this song go tell it on the mountains that jesus christ is born otherwise we'll be sitting in our home and only singing in the churches one song go and tell on the mountains we'll sing that song but we'll come to our homes and we'll sit on our thrones and we'll only have our grilled turkey and some cream with it on christmas day Come on, tell me about it. Yes, yes, brother. Because yeah, we just we just become you know we have conditions ourselves to these things. Just condition ourselves. But if we really understand that whatever we are here on this earth is just temporary, we don't belong to this earth because we are going to go to home. We are going to go one day to home. Then before we reach home, there is something that we have to finish. There is some assignment that has been given to us. and that assignment has to be complete in order to reach home and only those who finish their assignment they will reach home amen amen and so see the other once you taste and see how good god is once you have tasted yeah. you have tasted the new wine you will never ever compromise brother absolutely you no said the what. right word you said the right word sister angelic you will never compromise because if you are really you know as i said to you you got those 10 12 restaurants yeah. you know this one restaurant prepares the good food you don't want to go to any other restaurant because this restaurant gives you the best food that's when you come to the word of god that's when the holy spirit begins to teach you that's when you come to the school of the holy spirit you don't want to hear any jazz from anybody anymore because your ears your spiritual ears are tuned only to the truth yes i told you you know there was a time for me anything went as long as it was it was music to my ears but the moment you begin to receive revelations of the holy spirit and begin to you know all your your foundations have to be broken to build a new foundation that requires effort that requires guts that requires guts and only those who have guts who are ready to operate by the word they will reach home and so today 
I believe what we need to do is, if we can all take one thing from this teaching today, we simply need to break the foundations of which are based on unbelief and based on doctrines and philosophies and start building the new foundations based on the truth of God's word and start living the word of God, start doing the word of God, start sharing the word of God, start building the kingdom of God so that all these things that we are doing during this little time that we have on earth can make us eligible. Yes, brother. Amen. Amen. So would anyone want to say a small prayer before we finish? Anybody? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Sister Angelic, you go ahead and make that prayer, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship. No matter where we are, what we are doing, Lord, thank you for giving us that desire to be committed, Lord, to listen to your word every day and even every Friday to understand your word, more and more revelation of your word and know what it means to prepare ourselves to make that journey home in, irrespective of whatever persecution we receive, especially from our own family members who do not understand. They have not yet tasted the wine. But Lord, even though we have tasted that wine, Lord Jesus, no matter what, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, we still believe in your word, in you. And we have, we don't compromise, Lord Jesus. But we stay steadfast in knowing that the truth sets us free. Amen. We thank you. Praise you and we glorify you in your mighty and precious name. Amen. 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 Thank, you, Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jes